Ciao guys, Tyler Food here. So I was supposed to be at CES today, but actually things changed. Uh, unfortunately, like uh, my company, like the company I worked for, and I was supposed to go there with them, uh, just changed plans. So uh, just two days before, so I wasn't able to get any plane or hotel because everything is just super expensive right now. And uh, after buying that guy, I'm, I'm not, I don't have enough money for it. Uh, but by the way, here we are and in this video we're gonna talk about what NVIDIA actually unveiled yesterday, what are the very interesting things we have to expect thanks to NVIDIA to VR in the next year and going forward. So let's get to it. Yesterday, NVIDIA was the first company to start up with the conferences uh, in CES. And of course, everyone was waiting for the release of new hardware. And they actually arrived there, but uh, after like around 50 minutes, pretty much, that is like pretty long time. Everything was pretty boring and repetitive before because we already saw all those demo SC graph and also before under personal keynote. Uh, but finally that happened. And what we're talking about is the new 2060, the new uh, most affordable, uh, let's say uh, RTX available on the market that is gonna be released for 349. That is actually a, a pretty good price. If you consider that the 1070 was released like $20 more than what is released at 1060 now. And this 2060 will be more powerful than a 1070 Ti. Now we're talking about things that we don't really know yet because we don't have many benchmarks there's nothing out there yet but I think that considering the pricing that the 2080 2080 Ti they're having that are very very high like almost like crazy high well with this at least we have something that is affordable if you want to prepare a PC for like a good long content and well that's very interesting for VR as well and why well for not really for the ray tracing the RTX technology because that is something that probably we don't really need yet in VR right now it's more important to have more horsepower to run more pixels because we need more resolution instead of like uh, just having good reflection and perfect reflection that they look very very realistic now uh, of course we're gonna have to have also ray tracing in the future but i think this is a step like a little too long right now so i will not expect ray tracing in the near future in vr let me know what you think by uh, considering on the technology that we have the lss that is like ai learning uh, anti-aliasing works pretty well on 1440p screens that they stay at pretty good distance from you but we have 1440p screens in vr and we are still complaining about too low resolution so a good anti-aliasing is not going to solve the problem at all so what we need is more powers to run more pixels and as we saw with the pimax ak like you need a lot of horsepower if it's not optimized anything and well uh, that's where we need graphic cards to go for VR but why this 2060 is very interesting anyway beside the price point also for the virtual link integration we talked about virtual link in the video over here it is a very interesting consortium to have one single cable for VR and well um, wireless is not there yet uh, we saw implementation with the tp cast with the htc vive wireless adapter that they works pretty well they have some artifacts and everything but they require a lot of hardware still to have it and it's not really consumer ready yet um, you need to be an enthusiast to really appreciate that so we're gonna have to stick for the cable for longer even because if you need more resolution we also need the cable right now because wireless is not so fast and enough if you already see artifacts on that uh, on our like HTC Vive the regular one well uh, means they probably are not ready yet for like a big resolution wireless but uh, that's very interesting because finally we're getting to the point where getting to VR is easier and easier where you're gonna have just to connect the cable and you're good to go you don't need breakout box and everything and it's not gonna be a super big cable but just like a regular type C cable so uh, very very interesting and also the very interesting thing is the fact that the laptops are gonna support this virtual link connection and the laptop are gonna support of course now uh, what they unveiled the 2060 the 2080 and the 2080 ti and the 2070 without any problem now for the 2070 2080 we're gonna have the max q design so that means that is a balance between the thermal 
and the clock speed to make it like possible to run in like thin laptops without having like super thick uh, desktop PC with a battery inside. Instead, uh, with the 2060, the very interesting thing is that we are talking about a real fat 2060 inside a laptop. Like we've seen first, like uh, two years ago with a 1060, um, they were just put in the regular desktop card inside the laptop in uh, some cases and uh, was just running very very well and there wasn't any more that like mobile chipset that we were used to with the 980M, 960M that were like very crappy and slow compared to the desktop part. Well, they were very comparable and that's where this very interesting thing that this 2060 will give enough power for a good price of 350 to a lot of laptops and we're gonna be able to have a lot of more feature uh, VR ready laptop and also all the 1060 laptop that were already good for VR they're gonna drop the price so that would be very very interesting for the idea of like console VR of this easy laptop to bring around connect to VR and be good to go but the very interesting thing actually the real focus on VR that we had during this conference was when they unveil that they're working with HTC directly and they actually said that there are 4 million PC VR out there that is an impressive number actually I was expecting less and I'm very happy about it I don't know how Nvidia got to this point how to know this but probably with the connection with like their updates and uh, the GeForce experience and everything they probably collect the data but Anyway, they said 4 million devices. I know a lot of people with a lot of VR headsets, so I don't know if they're the same of 4 million of people actually, but it's a very good number. I have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I have 7, so I, I really count like a, an exaggerated one. Anyway, the really interesting thing that they talked about was they working with HTC to have a forward rendering. So that means that they're gonna increase the pixel in the middle part or keep the same in the middle part but decrease the pixel all around and that's actually a very good idea because even if it's not related to an eye tracking solution for as a reason like right now with the lenses with Fresnel lenses we already have some distortion some like uh, the image is not very clear on the size it's like if you want to read something right now with your VR headset if you're used to VR you really have to look to the thing like directly and so you're gonna be able to read instead if you're looking this way you're not gonna be able to read clearly it's better just to move towards uh, what you're looking at and well in this way decreasing the resolution on the external part is actually very clever because it's gonna decrease the workload for the GPU so maybe you're gonna be able to run better performance on the games where in the area where you don't really care because you're anyway focusing every time in the middle also, when you're gonna have a tracking, the technology is gonna be already ready and you're gonna be able to move the eye tracking around for the rendering everywhere. So that's very, very interesting. Now, what is said about it that we're there just talked about HTC. So all the others like Windows Mixed Reality and of course, Oculus uh, didn't, they weren't mentioned at all. That could be just a marketing thing from HTC because they're directly there, or it could be just uh, something between them. And so the other will not be able to use this new technology and everything. And that will be sad in that case, but it's very exciting that anyway, uh, we're talking about VR finally on the stage and people are not scared to talk about VR anymore. And it's actually something that uh, prove a point on the evolution of the graphic cards and everything but that was all guys this is my inside of uh, uh, the vr vr the nvidia conference I, I think it was very very interesting i really look forward to knowing more about what is going to be unveiled at this ces and of course about the stc conference about this stc cosmos uh, we don't really know what it is but we have some ideas and uh, but we're gonna know about that very very soon for now guys let me know what you prefer to have ray tracing right now with low server solution in vr or would you just prefer more horsepower to run more and more, more pixel and more resolution let me know in the comment below for now thanks for watching if you liked the video like if you didn't like the video dislike subscribe to the channel for more about vr and tech see you guys in the next video thanks for watching ciao